Hey, good morning there everybody. Sunday morning and I thought I'd take a quick look at the paper wars. Uh, what are we up to now? 79 I think, yeah. Issue 79. And we may have cats and dogs and all sorts of things in the background but I've got uh, 10 or 15 minutes here so I thought I'd uh, talk about the magazine. And the f I want to uh, do something a little bit differently. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about the game first. And I'm cozy and comfy in my chair, so this is really probably just a discussion as opposed to showing you all the, the glorious bits and pieces. That's my shoes. Uh, <clears throat> so this game, when you hear about it, you're going to think, oh, it's a B-17, Queen of the Skies clone, and uh, it'll have all those features and aspects, and it will be just like that. So why should I bother? As one thing you'll say, or the other thing you might say is, Oh, it's just like B-17, Queen of the Skies. I'll get it anyway because it'll be uh, interesting because it's using Wellingtons instead of uh, uh, B-17s. And so you might want to get it. <clears throat> or you might be in my camp, which is... Oh, uh, boy. Okay, it's another no choice. Let the, let the game play you solo game. And I have only just done a quick uh, scanning of the rules... And I've read perhaps uh, 80% of them in a skim, in a kind of a skim mode. And the first thing I'm going to suggest to you about this game, let me grab this page over here, is a couple of things that are uniquely different. Uniquely different? No, they're just unique. Uh, or specific to the game. How about that? Uh, this idea here that as you progress through the game, you are given experience points with which you can apply some uh, of those points to in each mission to various uh, uh, aspects of the of the game uh, one curious thing here is they call the bomb the, the bombardier the aimer I just thought that was kind of unusual there's so much uh, terminology in here that's correct and maybe that's what the Canadian excuse me what the Canadians did um, and then you also have three points every game that allow you to, every uh, mission, that allow you to have the pilot's discretionary points allocated. And you can re-roll a die. You can add one to your maneuverability and add one to your stamina. Uh, the game uses a 2d10 uh, range uh, for a lot of the die rolls, but uh, specifically for the event die rolls. And I'll show you the map here in a second. And I have not got all the details on what the map does and, and all the different bits and pieces. But my point about this in three minutes is really simply this, that this does look like an interesting take on uh, solitaire gameplay because it's giving you some choices for crew and how to apply uh, experiences and uh, benefits from previous games into... Uh, your next mission. So it's giving you a little bit more choice about what you're doing and how you're doing it and you're not just being beat on. There's also, uh, as I mentioned, this event, so there are events tables in the rules and those events are going to add some variety and uh, uh, surprises to your experience in each particular session. I like that artwork. Well, I'm sorry about the wonky camera, I don't have my stand so I'm just... Uh, and I'm in the I'm in my bedroom. I'm supposed to be getting ready to go to a lacrosse tournament. This game's called Thunderbirds at War. I probably should have told you that. Bombing the Reich. And it's the uh, Paper Wars magazine. <clears throat> you can tell I've only had one cup of coffee today. Or maybe you are thinking, eh, it's the same as usual. And let me show you the counters. Now I've got to say, you know, the counters are nothing to write home about. But I've not really been super impressed with the compass. Uh, games counters that come in the, in the magazine lately anyway uh, they're, they're, they're okay these chits here the ones you can see the airframe ones they all have they're a random chit I believe you pull and it has a different uh, different effect right look this one says boom uh, I think this game is supposed to be a consumable light interesting game that tells the story of the squadron and uh, I think it's going to do that pretty well. I'm quite interested in seeing how this all plays out. Let me see if I can just grab the uh, event, uh, um, random events table for you. Well, I pushed the wrong button, but nevertheless, table three has this random events table. And uh, there are inbound and outbound events that occur. 
and you roll uh, you roll two d ten to sort through what you, what it is you're going to be doing. At least I thought it said two d ten, but I'm seeing these numbers. Uh, obviously, a one and a nine, and it goes up to eighteen. Uh, so it's a little curious. I'm not sure how that's going to work. We'll have to read the rules more in more detail. Uh, so there's that aspect of it that I think is going to be interesting. And the second uh, thing is you can play through the all the scenarios in a random manner, in the historical manner, or uh, there's a third way to do it as well. And I forget what that third way is right now. But anyway, there's a third way to do it. Uh, it's got a nice summary in the back here that is uh, one, it's three columns basically. That gives you an outline of the game, uh, playing a historical mission. And then uh, it uh, has probably, I'll probably call it eight pages of rules, maybe nine, something like that. All right, I'll let you guys uh, let you guys go and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you on the rest of the magazine in just a little bit. So let's have a look at Paper Wars, the magazine itself. Uh, the, uh, Richard Simmon uh, does a great job. Uh, in terms of his writing style and writes a very long but engaging uh, review of Red Winter uh, with lots of nice artwork in it and lots of discussion about playing the game and really gives you a good feel <coughs> excuse me, for the game system why he enjoys it, why he finds it uh, satisfying and interesting you want to say hi to the dog? you want to say hi? say hi to everybody? yeah, say hi <clears throat> All right, go find a ball. And uh, so, so, so that's a good article. I enjoy that. Uh, there's a, a review of the ATO Richard Berg game. And uh, Emery also does a really nice job here, uh, giving us a feel for this game, as such that uh, you know, I had dismissed this title altogether. And I think I will take the opportunity to have a look at it at some point. It might be a, a nice, simple game to play. Although Berg and simple don't necessarily go together. But he does a good job of uh, reviewing this magazine, no, this game, magazine game, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, the war. So there's uh, several articles in here, uh, you know, basically designer notes for Compass Games titles. And if you're really interested in them, I think you should read them. Uh, if you're not, you can skip them. That's the good thing, right? There's a review of Cellus, I think that's how you pronounce that, by John Burr. Sorry, John, I'm blurring you out there, dude. John Burt, no less. It's dark in here. Now, this is Revolution's title. Uh, Revolution Games is a company I have not played any of their titles at all, and I believe this is supposed to be a fabulous game, and this certainly reinforces that impression. Um, I'm looking forward to trying out some of their games. I may not try this one. I'm just not that excited about the bulge uh, anymore. Uh, <clears throat> Jerry does a good job on Coralia 44, not a game I particularly enjoyed myself, but uh, kudos to the SCS guys for actually uh, putting a little bit of chrome on there to make that, that game more interesting than it uh, otherwise would have been. Uh, Borodino, I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm not a big fan of this title. Uh, I haven't played it. I'm just not, a, sorry. I'm not a big fan of block games in general, and I'm not uh, that excited about the way the combat system seems to work, seem to work in the uh, Columbia Games titles. So it all feels very similar to me, uh, you know, with the, the B1, uh, B1, B2, B3, B4, A2, AC, whatever. It's all the same, right? It just has a very you know, generic feel to it. <clears throat> Although this game does actually come out with uh, come with a few uh, specific thematic rules that kind of give it a little bit of sex. Uh, Doug Murphy writes an article about this title, and you can see how to pronounce that word right there, Shekotinov. And uh, this looks like an interesting little game. It seems like it takes take, takes a long time to play for a very short span of time, according to the according to the. The review, and I'm not talking 10 hours, but it's four or five hours to play something that is uh, a fairly short span of time. Fairly basic graphics by the looks of it, right? And the, the counters are, are poppy, but not uh, nothing to write home about. 
But he gives it uh, full marks for being an interesting title and uh, to capturing the theme of the battle and the situation. So we've got to, got to give a credit there. Now, just to wrap up uh, on the magazine, that's the game that I've already got the poster for, uh, sorry, posted about. Some historical stuff there. So there's quite a bit of information uh, uh, for this uh, uh, Thunderbirds at War title that's in the game. There's a lot of, uh, in the magazine. There's a lot of uh, historical information. Fifty Point Games, uh, Michael McAlpin writes a very good article and is very persuasive about this series. I am not that interested in it, but he writes a great article. It's very, very long. And, you know, I... Uh, and when I say very, very long, it's probably a couple of thousand words, and that's not super long, but there's a lot of detail on how the game is played. And I just, I'd just be more interested in a shorter article about the experience, you know? I don't think I need to know everything about how the game is played. Because the, these, these, these titles are part of a system, and they all typically play about the same way. So we don't need to have a rehash of that every time. Uh, there's a review by John <coughs> Elson of White Star Rising, the Lock and Load title. Uh, it's a platoon scale game. I've played a couple of these scenarios. It's one of the systems from Lock and Load that I used to own all of but have sold. Not because I don't like it, but just that uh, it was uh, not uh, scratching the itch for me at, pl at the platoon scale. And I have. Uh, I have their World of War series, which is World War Three stuff that is far more, to me, far more exciting, actually. Uh, anyway, this uh, this is a very solid review, well-written, and gives you a really good feel for the game. Uh, John obviously went through the same exercise that I did of, you know, do I really need this? Do I need another tactical game uh, in, in the World War Two era? And he came away thinking, yes, he did. A Compass Games... Uh, Advertorial, uh, Dawn of Freedom review. I did not read this. I have zero interest in this uh, game and the system. Uh, but once again, another nice long article and uh, just some, some good meaty reading there for you if you're into the card-driven game aspect of the world. Uh, End of Empire, another advertorial in the game uh, and this and just because they're promoting uh, compass games doesn't mean that they're ads per se but they're obviously going to be positive this is just really well written in fact this is not even about the game so much as it is about the history of the era and uh, i i really do like this article in particular it was very engaging because uh, it really it, it let the game alone and uh, focused on the history and the last review is a test of metal uh, by High Flying Dice. Uh, it looks really, really interesting, nicely written. Once again, not a system or a game that I've, I have, have a couple of the High Flying uh, Paul's uh, games. I've not played any of them yet. This might get me off the couch to do such. All right, that's a quick look at uh, issue number 79, a kind of a shaky look. I did that on purpose there for you. And we will uh, talk to you soon.